you have walls that you can paint on, given permission by the council. It sounds like is it just a just a sect in the council that agree with street art and they understand that it can bring culture to to the city. Is it just a group of a small group of people in the council that you've connected with? I'm, I'm just trying to understand how you you, you broke through bro- so broke got, through those barriers. I've got big walls that I've made friends with big landowners who own like heaps of property and they give me quite a lot of walls so that's one source of walls is getting them off the private landowners private yeah but then council i've got i've got to understand how the permission process works like how to actually um this process called landowner approval so you find a wall landowner approval covers um auckland council walls so this is parks basically parks so think of a park you walk into a park and there's like a toilet block or a little wall that people can practice squash on or something some like some wall inside the park and then you have to apply for landowner approval and you have to pay 580 dollars and then that's your landowner approval application and then that goes before the local board and the local board has to approve your design and then you get permission, and then now you got to find funding, and then you can go and paint the wall. Oh. <laughs> so it's like pretty. Yeah. If you don't already have someone who's pretty keen to throw some thousands of dollars at you, it's probably not going to get off the ground. Mm. And then, um, yeah, there's different process for like AT and water care and stuff like that. There's so that's like um, the average person outside wants to get in, wants to. A- Painting something more, but with you working for the council, they just do it for free, do they? Oh no, I have to, I have to go through that process. Oh really? Yeah, I, I haven't done many jobs with the council. Oh, Not okay. many, yeah. a few, but yeah. more than like probably like five, four. four. And, the, and the council won't fund you if you went through that process. It was it's just all on you? Um. So different parts of the council, there's like. So you've got you've got the the council's a massive animal, right? It's like this huge organization. They've got different parts of the council. So they've got like um, they've got like this beautification team. They've got the arts team. They've got different like parks department, and some of them have budget for different stuff. So I would get I got I got like two thousand dollars for one spot, and then another one they. They've got like contractors who do jobs for council who also have big budgets and you can you can go and work for them. Like if you approach the dump, like this is a council, the council owns the dump, but they have their own budget so they can pay you to do a mural there. Or if you go and talk to the library, they're so different different places, with, they're part of the council, but whereas if you go to the, if you go and ask about a park wall, you, everyone's in the same like, there's no funding there you've got to you've got to figure out how am i get the funding for this mm. which is why that that sort of working that sort of space is way harder and that's where i'd like to see them sort of loosen things up and redu- first just reduce that reduce that fee that's like 580 bucks who can afford that like that's like most of the budget for a small mural that's like there's your whole that's your whole money like all the paint everything the labor i could do a whole mural for 580 bucks and then they want to ask me for that, and that's not even a guarantee that they're going to say yes. They might say no. And oh right, because it's like you're applying, yeah. Yeah, I've, for, yeah, I've applied, and they've said no, and I was like, oh, okay, oh, why? How is this going to work? I can't do this. Like I'm like five hundred and eighty dollars. You mentioned before that it's harder in Auckland than the rest of New Zealand. The rest of New Zealand have the same sort of process, obviously not, but the the fee, and is it is it, is it easier to get walls done like in in Wellington, say or Hamilton. Oh, so let's talk about actually. But I mean, I'm not. I don't live in those cities, so mm. I'm not the expert. But I live in Auckland, and we've got four million dollars per year being spent on people driving around in vans, eradicating everything. Like you do a you do a tag, it's gone. You do a, a nicer piece of graffiti, like a multicolor piece, gone. You do a, a picture of people, like a, a mural, like a piece of artwork, gone. You do a kid's play path, like a game on the street for kids to play, gone. Like everything. 
that's Auckland. Whereas you go to Christchurch, that's clearly not going on there. I don't, I haven't, I haven't done enough research to really understand what the rules are down there, but it's clearly not the same. Like you go down there and you see stuff staying up, that's good, and it's like they, they don't have the same rules clearly. And Wellington and Whangarei and and then you go to like other cities around like Australia and stuff. It's like nah, this this is different. There's something different here. Four million dollars is a lot of money. A lot of taxpayers' money, you know. A lot of um, ratepayers' money <laughs> going in, going in just to take some tags off. And it's interesting that what you're doing would probably neglect some of the LA. Like, if there's more murals out there, I think that's what you you talked about in the in the news article I read. You know, if, if there's more of you guys out there painting murals, painting painting walls all over the city, there'll be less tagging around or less op- less opportunity for the money spent on taking tag, tags away. Well, every let's say you've got a person who would be out illegally tagging. Mm. If you can provide somewhere where that person can legally go and paint, they only have 24 hours in a day. If they're painting there legally, they're not out tagging. Like, it's, mm. I just think it's as simple as that, really. Yeah. And then on top of that, if there's more beautiful artwork out there, um, more people are going to want more beautiful artwork. And this is going to have a carry-on effect and the industry will thrive more street artists will be employed more people will want this done and people's attitudes towards public art and public spaces will soften and we will have a more beautiful city we will get more like when you drive down any main road in auckland just think about like how many murals do you see how many big fences like people's full fence painted with artwork how often do you actually see that it's almost zero like almost zero which is really strange. Like, you go to Australia and try and you count, you'll see them everywhere. Like, every major city in Australia, the suburbs have artwork on people's front fences. It's not it's not super common, but it's way more common than here. It's, it's quite, yeah, I, I think that was the thing that really shocked me when I came back to Auckland, was like, where is the art? Like, there's, there's just this sort of, it feels like, sort of sad to me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like... <laughs>